Welcome to the third lab session on engine-based simulation. In this lab session, you will learn how to use an engine-based model for experimentations. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to deal with the stochasticity in the model. So let us start. Let us start with the model that we have completed last week. If you still remember, our model is stochastic because we specify that the at effectiveness of each agent is random following a triangular distribution. Likewise, the adoption fraction is also random following a triangular distribution. This shows that our model is stochastic. And also, the network connection between agents, if you still remember, we set it to be a small world network, which is also stochastic. Because every time you run your model, the network structure will change if you use different random numbers. Instead of putting our agents randomly, let us put them in a XY coordinate in which X is the at effectiveness value of an agent and Y is the uh, adoption fractions of the agents. In order to do that, we need to go to uh, consumers and then we need to change the initial locations of the uh, of the agents yeah so for the x we need to type space width multiply space width will give you uh, the width of the two-dimensional space in which our agents live and then we'll multiply this one by the at effectiveness of the agent minus 0 0.005 which is the minimum value for at effectiveness divided by 0.01 which is the range of the at effectiveness value likewise we do the same for y so we can simply copy x what we have typed in x and then paste it here now we just we need to change width with height and at effectiveness with adoption fraction so basically here it means that we uh, we will display our agent depending on the value of its at effectiveness and its adoption fractions there's a mistake there okay fractions let us see whether our code is working properly. So if this is working properly, we would expect most customers will be around, will be located around the center. Okay. Let us run it using the test simulations. That's, that's why we uh, specify test model, right? Because, that, because then we can get the results very quickly because the model is smaller. Okay, let's click run. And as we have expected, most of the agents will be roughly around the center. So we are quite confident that the, the, the code is working properly. So the next step is that we want to make sure that every time we run our simulation, it will produce a different result. It will use different random numbers. So in order to check that one, let's let us look at the uh, test min settings. So make sure that the randomness is based on random seed. It means that every time we run this model, the, the model, it will use different set of random numbers, and it means that it will produce different results. Likewise, we also check the, the baseline so make sure it's also a random seed okay so once you we, we are happy with that the next step is to run our simulation model so in this case let's say we run the, the small model first so we want to make it run as far as, pos as, far as possible so you simply just set the uh, speed and then click run Now, when your simulation mo when the simulation is complete, if you hover your mouse on the data on the chart, then you can see uh, the 
copy icon. So all that you need is click this copy icon. And then you can open an empty uh, an empty Excel sheet. And then you simply paste it in here. Then there you go. We we get the the data, the output data from the simulations. Remember that our model is stochastic, so this is only what this is one simulation run. So if I insert and we see the right, this one is replication. Let's say we call it replic replication one. So we need to do the same for replication 2 and then run the model again. And then copy, paste it again. Here. If you notice here, the numbers are different. Right, compared to this one, because we are using different sets of random numbers. So we can we repeat this process until you get the number of replications that you need. The process in this case we do a manual process. Um, it it this this approach is fine if you only need a, a small number of replications. But if you need a high number of replications, obviously this approach is not efficient. So we need to uh, we need to collect the data automatically using a bit of programming. In order to collect the output data automatically, we need the help of data set. The first step is to insert data set. So go to a palette, analysis, dataset, drag it to the main canvas. Let us call this one n user ds because we want to store the number of users in this dataset. We want this dataset to be updated automatically and we want to keep the last 365 days of data points. And the first update is at time C at day zero at the beginning, and F the update is done every one day, which is exactly what we want. So once we have created the database to store um, the number of users for each simulation run, then we need to specify the parameter variation experiment. To do that, we need to go to project tab again. And then right click on the project name, new uh, experiment. So we, we select parameter as uh, variations and then we, we can copy the model time setting from test and then click finish. So the first thing that we need to change is that uh, we need to change the parameters from varied in range to free form. And then we can specify the number of runs that we need for each experiment. So let's say we want to run 30 simulation runs per experiment. So in this case, we only want to do one experiment, which is with a population size of 100. Next, we want to make sure that every run will use different random numbers. So we need to select a random, random seat. So next, we need the help of a chart because if you still remember it is easier to copy the data from any logic to excel by copy and pasting values from the chart so in this case the chart that we that is suitable is time plot because we want to plot number of user over time so let's drag this here make it a bit bigger now, in this data set, we set it to be do not update data automatically because we want to update it manually. So we don't really need any data in here. So we can remove this. 
we still want to display up to 365 days and the time window is also 365 days so that is done for the chart now because we want to update it manually so that we need to write a code or command to update this chart so this chart is called plot now let's go to the parameter variation again so click on the parameter variations the way we update the plot is by going to the java action sections so in this case we want to update the plot after each simulation run after each replications so so in this case after a simulation run we type the command to first is to add the data set the one that we have collected so to the plot so the command is plot dot add data set root dot and user ts so plot is the name of the time plot and we add data set to the plot and what data set to be added is end user ts because end user ts is inside main which is outside parameter variations we need to use root dot user ts root means we go to the main and then we can access end user ts so let us go back again to the parameter variations now after we add the data set to the plot it will not be automatically displayed so we need to refresh the plot so we type plot dot update data so now we can run our model up let's let's compile the model first and see if we have made any mistake it's successful so now we can run the parameter variations experiment okay so now let's run it so here we can see that something is not quite right so let's let us check what is what is wrong because the data shows that it's zero all the times it means we make a mistake in in the data set so let us look at the data set yeah so this is the mistake because we forgot to record the number of users so to record the number of users we need to type consumers dot and user remember in our previous lab sessions we have created these functions to count the number of users over time so let us now compile our model again and run the parameter variations okay now let's click run now you can see that every there are 30 data sets that's because we have 30 runs so every run will be represented by one plot so if you select this one that will be another plot so each data set or each plot each simulation run represent one possible reality yeah so in order to copy the data like before what you need to do is just click on the copy button and then open excel and, and then paste it then you get all the data in here so this is the, the this is the uh, column a is the simulation time uh, column b is the result of replication one column c is replication two and so on so forth until replication 30. so now we can use this data to do post analysis so you can use any software that you like if you know how to use SPSS, you can use SPSS. If you prefer to use R, you can also use R to do the analysis and and the choice is yours. Remember that simulation software is good for doing simulation modeling, but they are not designed for data analysis. So you need to use 
software that is specifically designed for data analysis to analyze simulation outputs. So that is the end of our lab sessions. By now, you should be able to use an agent-based simulation model to make better decisions. I hope you enjoy learning agent-based simulations. So that's it from me.